Peeps, it's Bella Ubedoble and I'm Falda. I'm Namani. And I'm Stefan. And welcome. welcome. So today's topic is titled Architecture. And what's gonna happen in this video is all these wonderful gentlemen will be explaining to you all what the course is about and inform you guys about that. But before we get to that, please use this opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Do not forget to turn on those notifications and hit the like button for this video. So first is your introduction to architecture. Basically, you are not bound to rules yet. You are sort of uh, abstract thoughts, everything. Yeah, you, you yeah, architecture, conceptual. Still a distant memory before you can do that. Uh, yeah, and I think the the main highlight for my for me in first year was the art building, um, and that's like you use earth construction to construct a your first art or dwelling in a sense. No, it's good teamwork with all the new members that you have in your class. Okay, so first year I mean is to look at uh, the fact that as a person you need a skin. So you start first mm. with the first skin, second skin, and then the third skin. So first skin is your body, uh -huh. second skin, clothing, and then third skin, a building. Yes, yes. That's wonderful. So do you guys work together? So it's not really individual work. Oh, it's groups of four people working together. You basically don't know each other. It's like three, four weeks into the semester. It's like yeah, like an icebreaker that you sort of get to know each other, and then after that you start with your cabin project. Um, yeah, the architect's the retreat. Architect's retreat. Yeah, the memorial yeah. for. So then you start going right. into more formal, like architecture, but you are still not. You're not bound like I would say like the late years, like second year moving on into second year. You start looking at construction, how that sort of plays an important role and how things should be done. And then you start doing housing, start looking at a larger scope, I'd say. What do you guys find? I'll start working with existing structures. Yes, uh, yes, I can yes. remember the crawl project. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing the artist gallery in the crawl. Yes. And you get feels on my favorite studies yes. and you go yeah. out. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. So basically, I would say, but to, to, um, to go back to first year, it's about preparing your <coughs> thinking capacity or thinking uh, way of thinking about architecture or how you actually place your mind when you think about architecture mm -hmm. first year. Okay, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And the space, do you guys have like a general space where you guys work? Well, we're currently sitting in the master's studio, so this is a bit smaller. Upstairs we've got the first years. Yeah, yeah it's huge, it's like six, five times the size. Yeah. Five. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of meters, meters, loud three children. meters by five, eight meters. So it's this big studio, and you have your allocated workstation. Obviously, it's not as big as this one here, Masters. This, you literally have your own desk and everything to work with. And yeah, I would just say like it's like progressing through the ranks. And each year, you have from first, second, third, fourth, fifth, you have your own workstation, which just increases in size. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so that's first. Yeah, yeah, so first year, yeah, it's, yeah. it's mainly yeah. open. Yeah, yeah. yeah. mainly yeah. open studio because it's all about trying to break that ice. Because when you first arrive, you almost afraid of each other. Yeah, yeah. So you get to work together, you get to connect with one another, and then be free to now mm -hmm. work on your own project. Having yeah, yeah. In addition, yeah. it's also about that um, of learning from one another, especially because we have a. Uh, Exhibition, cube, exhibition hall. So whenever a year presents their work, um, other years can work, walk through and have a look what they're doing, how they're progressing, how their projects are looking, and learning from actually learning from one another. And then hopefully that will like, if you see something, you would want to go speak to that student and ask them how do they do this and and so forth. So it's it's, it's like integrated learning between the years. Mm. And yeah, I think our studio culture is probably the. Best. I don't know, I, I would say so, like, I don't think that, I don't hear much from other architecture universities having this type of studio culture, um, but yeah. Yeah, because it's also about inspiring each other. If you are in first year and you see, say maybe fourth year or third, third year pin up, then you can have some ideas yeah. from that and then you can almost implement in your first year or second year. 
Exactly. Yeah. So it's but interconnected inspiration. Yeah. I love it. It's wonderful. I'd like to see this sometime. Like, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see this sometime. Can I look up? Okay. Go so um, now going on to our honors year, fourth year. This is uh, after you've obtained your bachelor's degree in architecture for the three years that you've studied. This is now for your honors. And the honors year is basically focusing on your independent research and applying theories to architecture. Um, you guys can elaborate oh, further. Basically taking off the training wheels. You're a bit less dependent on the lecturers. You're more dependent on your own design and stuff. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's definitely about being able to execute at uh, that level because in third year, if I'm to go back a little bit, you focus mostly in the CBD. Mm -hmm. But then when you cross over to fourth year, it's not necessarily about the CBD alone. You look at all aspects of architecture and how the theories can be uh, inter inter integrated into yeah, one another. Yeah. And it's also looking at a larger scale. Yeah. Look at the project that we done. We done a project at uh, Kings Park where we actually, as a whole class, um, we had to uh, we kind of made say we had to design, design the whole park as a as a as a body. And uh, I think yeah, fourth year literally puts you in like an office perspective. Like this is what you will be doing in your section and so forth. Yeah. Mm, and working with everybody. Yes, yes, yes. At the exactly. scale of professionalism, you not know, the scale of getting to know each other. Yeah. 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 yeah, and also starting to work on your dissertation, preparation for master's. Yeah, you, so at, the, at the end of your honours degree or honours year, you, you are, you, they, they actually encourage us to, or part of our project is to write a book. And uh, that book is based on your design and how you apply the theory, how you got to the design synthesis thereof and yeah. And the construction as well. Exactly. So it's mainly called uh, a mini dissertation because it's not full dissertation like mm -hmm. in master's degree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you guys tell, tell us about the crit stations? How are those? Okay, so from first year all the way till fifth year, you have crit stations. Um, I would say in fifth year, it's a bit more independent, especially yeah, fifth year, fourth year. But from first year to third year, there's crits every we crit about three times three, a week. Times week yeah. yeah, three times, four times a week. And that's when you bring your work and uh, you crit with the lecturer. They sort of guide you based on the design principles and so forth and just make sure you're on the right track. You know, what do you guys receive from that? Yeah, and I think it's also mainly about uh, working around one table, maybe taking few students, even if you're critting one student, others can listen in so that they can start reaping some ideas from that and being able to understand what's required, yeah. yeah. That's oh. getting know, to know your lecture also, so yeah. certain lectures like this, so they being a bit of a people pleaser, <laughs> <laughs> running after lectures <laughs> desire. <laughs> okay. You guys are killing me, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so that's honours, right? Yeah, that's, that's the honours year. Very difficult, yeah, I'd say honours, uh, personally for me, was one of the hardest years. Um, well, we also transitioned from COVID from third year, so jumping into fourth year was again face to face and, mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, but yeah, it was a, one of my best years. But yeah, as I said, it's, it's a very it's a, it's a year that literally sets you sets you up. For yeah, I could say it's it's more realistic year towards uh, being out there yeah. working for the firm. So you really understand the the fundamentals that uh, run the functionality of a firm or around the functionality, even you study even like uh, the QS module, so quite a teach you how to uh, deal with uh, uh, legal issues in mm -hmm. practice and many other issues related to uh, working with other professionals in the related fields. Yeah. So, um, Masters, the year that like, yeah, the big, the big one. So, yeah, the Masters is... Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Most is definitely the one everyone grades, but um, you have enough time. Hopefully, we're still in the process of figuring that out. But definitely, a year that you are independent. You do what you are trying to achieve in architecture, and to challenge yourself this year. Especially for me, 
Um, and yeah, it's it's really it's really a year that's that's out there and that really can get your name out there. I'd say if you if you really have a good thesis. Yeah, I think masters uh, in comparison to fourth year, it's more project specific. So it's orientated on a certain specific project you're doing. So fourth year generally uh, allocates or allows you to almost look at the field of architecture. But then masters you specify on a certain if you're working in the CBD, you look at the fundamentals of design in the CBD. If you're working in the landscape, then you look at the landscape specifically. So it's not something that we could say it's generally helpful to everyone in a sense. Yeah. So it's, it's helping you on that particular uh, focus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Operating your own scenario and adapting to that. It's, it's kind of fun. You can do whatever you want to. It's, uh, Older, for example, is doing this fantasy of a design over the big hole in Kimberley. And yeah, and Amani is doing a herder, a sheep herder, yeah. like a border post, if I'm not mistaken. So it's quite interesting what everyone. What are you doing? I'm doing a parasite through a. I call it a parasite. It's a, this path going through an existing building, just showing experience of the craft, of yeah. tanning leather and stuff. So. Mm. Yeah, it's literally the first year that I would say excluding fourth year, but fourth year we were still bound to choosing a site to do our mini dissertation, but in masters you literally have your own decision where you want to work and what you want to do. You're mm. completely independent. Yeah. That's basically, I'd say that's the biggest takeaway from a masters year so far. And then, yeah, as going back to honors, honors is just teaching you the best way to discern. That's, that's one of the key words we heard a lot last year, and it's the best way to discern. Yeah. And then, Obviously, learning that throughout the year, you had the ability to do with this in masters. Yeah. Yeah. So, masters is mainly incorporated into three main modules that really support your thesis, which is design, theory, and construction. So, those have to talk to each other. It's not one separated module like uh, the previous years. So, you have to work on one project and look at all the aspects design aspect, theory aspect of that project, and also the construction aspect of it in order to understand the buildability obviously and the uh, strategies you can use to make your thesis sound. Yeah. Wow, this is really huge. <laughs> <laughs> okay peeps, so that was it for today. I've learned a lot and I just want to ask if any one of you guys have something to add before we conclude this. Yes, I think uh, one thing I could say is that uh, if ever you want to study architecture, um, you must be rich because <laughs> these people here are rich. <laughs> no. Money, because you need to buy material, school fees, and you need proper laptops. So you really need financial support. If you get a bursary, that's beautiful. So, but then architecture really in general requires a lot of financial strain and also a lot of stress, you need to be able to cook yeah, through a lot of stress and long pressure. hours, long yeah. hours especially. Most importantly, creativity. Yeah, creativity. Yes. I'd say, yeah, for, for high school, if you listen in grade, before grade 10, if we have to choose your subjects, I'd say choose art, definitely, because it's going to help you. Um, EGD. Uh, EGD does help, but I think you, you are trained through the years to draw, draft well. And yeah, definitely architecture is a financial drain as a student because you pay a hell of a lot for materials, printing, so there's a lot of additional costs that come with it. And then your work ethic really has to be on level. You have to, you have to stay on level or you're going to Diernach. It's something that not one architecture student hasn't done. They've all done enough, we all try and stay on schedule, okay, but we will sense. definitely find that time to work straight through the night. But yes, it's in the end, you are rewarded in a sense, um, it is rewarding. And yeah, it's, 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 it's a, if you look at the essence of architecture, it's really a nice journey. Um, I must say, I learned a lot about myself through architecture, and yes, it's yeah. really a great, great course. And a, an interesting thing about architecture is that Sometimes you're not necessarily uh, restricted to the field of architecture. I've seen a lot of people actually after completing their five year degree, master's degree, actually exploring other careers, not necessarily 
working in architecture, but it actually allows you that opportunity to explore yourself and know your interests. So it's a really good career to follow. Uh, but then, um, if we are to be honest, I don't know of a new rich architect. But my friends, you can tell me. So if you are looking to be rich, go look at engineering and stuff, not architecture. Architecture doesn't really make people rich. Unless you go overseas. <laughs> <laughs> that is how I feel. I think that what matters mostly is the passion over mm -hmm. anything. Because, yeah. I mean, obviously, the real world is quite uh, challenging in terms of finances and stuff. But I feel like the passion is the most important. Because it will drive you to new places and that is how you stay consistent and determined and all of that. That's how you also discipline yourself, you know, if you love what you do and if you just keep doing it. So I think, yeah, the passion is more important. And the people you meet along the way, so. Yeah. It's just fun, like, yeah. they're very into your design, they don't even know it. Even like if you have friends in a drama faculty, like, yeah. Yeah. Yo, you start experiencing other stuff, like you start seeing that in your designs. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's interesting how things can influence, and, and as, archi as future architects, we are literally scripting spaces for people for the future. How we design now is very important for the future. So it's good that we are passionate for our world and, uh, and what state it's in yeah. and, and what's happening. So. Yeah. Which yes. reminds me of your project now with the big hole. Mm -hmm. What was your solution for that? Because I remember you mentioned something about um, maybe finding an architectural solution of how we could manipulate it. And yeah. there's something else you've also mentioned. Yeah, the water harvesting system in the big hole. And, but at, as of current, that is, I'm still obviously discovering what it should be. So. It's, but yeah, it's, it's, it's basically healing the city, hopefully healing the city, because the Big O is at the moment like a island that's segregating people from the city, I'd say. And the only way to view the Big O is, is through the museum, which you need to pay for. Why not make it open so that people can explore this wonder of the world? Yeah, it's a bit of my project. It's a lot to think about. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you peeps. I really enjoyed this one today. I hope that you guys have learned a lot from this as well. Uh, in case you guys might have missed uh, my introduction to the whole University of the Free State series, just click over here, go check it out, leave comments in the comment section, and I will see you guys in the next video. Till then, toodles. Hey! <laughs> hey.